guys, it's Jamie from Yarny Box, and I'm going to show you what sold at my market, what didn't sell at my market, and some tips for you to be successful at your next market. So starting off with the market, the market wasn't totally a failure, but it definitely wasn't my best market by any means. I sold about three times of what my booth cost. I normally try to strive for at least eight times my market booth cost, but unfortunately I didn't make that this time, but there are some reasons why, and I'm going to share those with you after I show you what sold. So first things first, pretty much all of my little stuff sold, which I was expecting. So I sold two of these guys. I sold about eight ducks. I sold 10 bees, just two little mini jellyfish. And then on Saturday night, I noticed that only things under $15 were actually selling well. So I ended up making some of these little tiny pocket octos and these are from All From Jade. And they're really, really fast. They take me like, nine minutes to make one and so I made 11 and I brought them and I think nine of them sold. I sold four squishy bunnies. So these were a really good seller which I'm really happy about because they're so fast and easy to make and they are super cute. I sold the orange jellyfish that I showed in my last video. It had yellow eyes. And I sold the pink and purple unicorn from my last video as well. I also sold the llama from my last video. She had uh, purple flowers on her neck and in her hair. I also sold an iguana, which I'm really excited about. I wasn't sure how the iguanas were gonna do, but I sold a minty green and orange iguana. Um, I sold it to a teenage girl and she was so excited about it and she just carried it like this around the whole day and it was so cute. And then I sold the blue bunny. And just a special mention, I did not sell a hedgehog, but he by far got the most attention at my booth. If you're looking for something to put on your table that grabs a ton of attention, a hedgehog is a great make. This pattern is by Crochet by Page on Instagram. So I have a couple of reasons why I didn't do very well at this market. Number one is because it was half a trade show and half a craft fair. So leading up to the market, I actually didn't know that it was split in half by half trade show, half craft fair. And if I had known that before applying for it, I probably would have skipped this one just because I know my demographic and I know my demographic is not the type to just go to a trade show for a weekend and walk around and kind of look at all the different booths. People that go to trade shows are usually older people, families with older kids, and just kind of the crowd to be walking around on a Saturday not really knowing what to do but just trying to kill time. I sell almost always to a 20 to 28 year old. And my second main demographic is families with really young kids. So, so yeah, my biggest tip is to know your demographic. And just because the demographic in my area for my stuff is 20 something year olds and young families, doesn't mean that's also going to be the demographic for your area. Unfortunately, markets are kind of a trial and error. You're going to have to really branch out, try new things, try different things, and figure out what sells best in your area to what crowd. Another tip that I have to make your craft fair more successful is to make most of your booth be under $30, um, especially in like the $10 to $20 range. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely a lot of people who will spend $70, $100, $200 at your booth, um, but it depends who the person is, what type of market it is, what season it is. In my experience, I find it's easier to sell to a bunch of people for really small amounts than it is to sell for a couple people with bigger amounts. Another tip that having a lot of small items on your booth gives you is that when someone picks up your toy and maybe it's a big llama and it's $75, it's a little bit of a sticker shock for some people. So if they see something that's $5 next to the $75 one, it might make the $75 one look more worth it because they can see the size difference. And also the $5 one is gonna look really cheap in comparison and so they're more likely to buy it. A question that I got on my last video was, is it okay to sell things that you make from other people's patterns? So for example, I made this hedgehog from someone else's patterns. Is it okay for me to sell it? The answer is absolutely yes. It is absolutely okay for you to take someone's pattern and make a toy from that pattern and then sell it. What is not okay is taking someone's pattern and reselling it as your own or even copy and pasting it into a different document or something like that. You cannot take the original pattern and move it or copy it or redistribute it or resell it or anything like that. That is an absolute no-no. There is copyright on uh, crochet patterns but you can absolutely make something from the pattern and then sell it as your own. But it is common courtesy or common practice to let people know if they ask, whose pattern is that? I would like to make that. You can say, this is by so-and-so on Instagram. 
Another question that was asked for my last video is, how do you know how much inventory to bring to a market? My answer is always bring as much as you possibly can fit in your car and as much as you can possibly make bring it to the market. And I know it can seem really daunting because everybody wants to crochet all day, every day, but unfortunately a lot of us don't have time for that. We've got kids, we've got jobs, we've got full-time schedule. So not everyone can just sit in their house and crochet all day. What I recommend for you is to break down your market prep to a schedule that's manageable and also achievable so that you can cross things off your list really easily and you'll feel like you're building a stock. For example, if you say, I really wanna stock up on ducks for Easter time, and you could say, I'm gonna make five ducks every single day this week, and by the end of the week, you're gonna have a ton of ducks that you can bring to your next market. If you break it down to a daily schedule where maybe you can sit down and you have an hour or two or three hours where you can crochet, it's a lot more manageable for you to fit that into your schedule. Before I attend any market, I always make a checklist on what I wanna bring. So I would write all that down in a little journal, and then I would cross off each animal and the amount that I had made. So that sums up my first craft market of the year. It was not super successful, but it also wasn't a failure. So next market I think will be a lot better because it's definitely catered towards that 20 to 30 age group like I was talking about. And if you have any other questions, comments, or concerns about your next craft fair and you want some advice, please feel free to leave any questions that you have down below. I can make another video addressing them. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Bye.